Six months ago, Wasi, the CEO of Empor, reached out to me because he saw my social media content. He explained to me that Empor aims to be Canada's first student university exclusive marketplace. He wanted to tap into the $29 billion secondhand goods market. Fast forward six months and I'm now the CTO of this exciting startup. I've officially spent a thousand hours writing 30,000 lines of code. This includes building a robust backend with Spring Boot and JWT authentication, building the front end with Next.js and TypeScript, and then including all sorts of microservices like Stripe for payment processing, building web sockets for real-time chatting, and allowing users to upload and see their own images the list goes on but today we're finally ready to launch our beta so let me show you everything that we got up to if you're new here my name is eric and i'm a 20 year old computer engineering student at mcgill i've completed three internships with a fourth upcoming at autodesk this winter and i've been building this startup in my spare time while vlogging it entirely on youtube so make sure you join our community by subscribing right now welcome to the beta of empor so as you can see empor is canada's first ever student exclusive marketplace you need to sign up by verifying your student email to join your campus market and let me show you what that looks like so first of all we verify that you're a student through your university student email the only way you can get access to this email is by being a current student so in your sign up it's mandated that you include one of the accepted emails that we have on our list currently we only support mcgill emails so when you sign up without a mcgill email you're immediately met with this error message we then have this secondary authentication by making sure you have access to your your inbox so to finish your signing up process you have to enter this verification code that you receive once you're in the site you then get complete access to buy and sell items on your campus so these are some of the sample listings that have been currently uploaded in the beta for example my roommate is selling his shoes because he no longer wants them if i wanted to buy them i could go ahead and chat to him directly and that's what this looks like so as you can see it's just a generic messaging and if i wanted to buy it now it takes you to the stripe checkout session right now after that purchase is complete our seller gets their payment deposited in their checking account that they linked with Stripe. But there's lots of work to do on that end. So I'm going to take you through this entire journey of what a week looks like building the startup. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so right now, this is what the entire payment structure looks like and it needs to be revamped completely. So once a buyer makes any purchase off of Empor, it gets sent to Stripe, which is listening to events to then send to our backend. This is called webhooks and think about it as a don't call us, we'll call you kind of functionality. So our backend server is just waiting to hear anything from Stripe. Then in the backend code, I have this update payout functionality, which basically finds all the information that Stripe sent, which includes who made the purchase and who is the seller. So we could figure out who to deduct money from and who to send money from. So after that, we just send back some JSON from the backend server back to Stripe, updating all the payout information so that we know how to send all the money back out to the seller. And at this point, we then take an 8% transaction fee, and this is to cover the Stripe fee and all processing fees we have, as well as to earn a 3% profit around on each sale. So that way we could remain profitable because that is one of our main business models. And then we pay out the rest to sellers. Now this 8%, it's been made specifically so that the seller gets exactly the amount of money that they're asking for. Say for example, a seller makes a post for $30, we will then inflate that price at the purchase point in the Stripe checkout session. So a $30 purchase would actually be $33. Think about it when you order off Uber Eats and it's like a $15 purchase, but then when you go to checkout, there's a bunch of these hidden fees. That's exactly what we're doing. And the logic is once you click purchase to go to the Stripe checkout session, you've already mentally bought the product. So the actual extra two or $3 won't matter that much. And then anyways, after all of that, we're pocketing that difference and giving the seller exactly the amount they're looking for. This also discourages sellers from taking the transactions off of Empor because this is a big problem in Facebook Marketplace. Because from a seller's perspective, if you're getting exactly the amount you're looking for and you're also gaining all of the security, why risk anything? You're getting the money directly deposited to your bank account. Also, you could trust Stripe. You can't trust e-transfers. Think of the workflow exactly how Uber Eats works, where after a purchase is made, the person dropping off the food has to enter a verification code to confirm the transaction went through. This adds that extra layer of security to both the buyer and the seller because we don't want anybody scamming each other. That's the whole point of our marketplace. So as you could tell, there's so much to code. I'm going to start working with the webhooks on the back end. And after I get this entire functionality working, we're finally ready to release the beta. So let's hop straight into it. I think I finally got a rough draft of all this payment processing things done. It was such a headache. It might have taken me around 25 hours to code. But let me show you everything I did. 
First, I built this Stripe webhook in my Spring Boot backend. Every time an item is purchased, we then generate this verification code to store in our database and associate it with the item that was purchased. We then go ahead and send out these emails. The first email is sent to the person who purchased it, which just mentions that you bought this product and here's the verification code that you have to deliver within seven days. And the second is for the buyer, which just mentions that you need a verification code to complete the transaction. I then also built this Stripe refund service with checks for verification codes that have expired in the repository. This was done by running this component every single day. The idea behind this was that we wanted some way to automate the process of refunding. So now if a seller does not get a verification code from the buyer within seven days, the buyer automatically gets refunded, which is exactly what we want. Now, since you're watching this video, chances are you're passionate about tech and about leveling up your skills. That's why I want to talk about zero to mastery. They're the single best way to learn how to code and actually get hired in tech or build that dream project of yours or take your career to that next level in the fastest, most efficient way possible. And here Here's why I love their courses. They're created and taught by industry professionals who actually work at top tech companies. Now, most importantly, they focus on something called project-based learning, which is the single best way to learn how to code. That's because by building real world coding projects, you're actually learning the skills you would use on the job. Plus, you can then add these coding projects onto your coding portfolio so you have a tangible way to show all of your results to a recruiter. And if you didn't know already, your coding portfolio is as essential as your resume when you're a software engineer, so this is crucial. But my favorite part is the community. When you join Zero to Mastery, you're not just signing up for some courses. You're joining a large global network of other developers, learners, and even instructors who are there to support you, motivate you, and even collaborate with you. This kind of networking is invaluable, especially when you're trying to transition your career or kickstart your own career. So if you're ready to stop procrastinating and start building out your future, check out Zero to Mastery right now. I've left a link in the description of this video with a special discount to help you guys get started. But now let's get back to the video. So let's say somebody wanted to buy this Manchester United jersey off of me. They would start by entering all of their payment information here. After that, the buyer gets this email and the seller gets this. Then in the your order section, you could go ahead and see everything you've bought and what the verification code is you have to give to the seller. You could also then see your sales with a text box to enter your verification code. If this code is incorrect or doesn't belong to you, it will not work. Otherwise, if you enter the correct verification code, the entire payment goes through. And now if I go ahead and refresh, I'll see that that order is no longer there because it's been properly confirmed. So that is the entire workflow. All we need is some beta testers to try to break it. All right, so that's going to be it for today's vlog. We accomplished so much, but there's still so many more components I have to implement. For example, I have to build out some notification system in the chatting so people could figure out when they're actually being messaged. And then I also have to go through and then change all of the wording to better suit a community purpose. And then after all of these mini components are done, I then have to go back into the backend and make sure that all the code is scalable. For example, I have to implement caching so that our server don't get overloaded with requests the work is never ending but that also means the content is never ending for the next vlog we're gonna have a hundred beta testers it's gonna be absolutely chaotic so make sure you leave a like and subscribe to not miss the next video i'll see you in the next one